Buonasera, benvenuti a tutti a questo dodicesimo appuntamento con il ciclo di seminari AEM che sarà in inglese, quindi da questo momento in poi le comunicazioni cambieranno lingua di base. Welcome everybody, this is the 12th uh, meeting uh, for the AIM uh, Artificial Intelligence and Mathematics uh, Cycle Seminars. We are honored to have uh, with us uh, uh, Yuang Wong, who is a scientist at Max Planck Institute for Mathematics in the Sciences, working on deep learning theory, applied harmonic analysis and graph neural networks. His research results appear in top conferences such as NeurIPS, ICML, and leading journals such as Applied and Computational Harmonic Analysis, Journal of Approximation Theory, ACM Transactions on Mathematical Software, Journal of Machine Learning Research, Neural Networks. Yu Guang obtained his PhD from the University of New South Wales, Sydney, and the Graduate Certificate in Deep Learning and Data Science from the University of California, Los Angeles. He has been a long-term visitor at UCLA and Brown University on computational harmonic analysis and geometric deep learning. He is the editor of the Journal of Frontiers in Applied Mathematics and Statistics, guest editor for IEEE TNNLS 2021, the program committee for ICML, NeurIPS, ICLR, and IJCAI. Uh, welcome to our um, guest and speaker. Please go on. Thanks, Gloria. So uh, let me first share the screen. Uh, OK. Uh, so uh, hello, everyone. This is Yu Guang. Uh, I'm from MPI. Uh, so today, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, joint work with uh, Xue Bing, Bing, uh, Bing Xing, uh, Jun Bing from University of Sydney, and uh, Ming Li from uh, Zhejiang Normal University of China, uh, Guido uh, Mantupa from UCLA, and Pietro Liu from uh, University of Cambridge on uh, work on graph neural networks. Here we will try to use like framelit system to see how the framelit uh, system uh, can help to enhance the uh, graph neural network. So before I uh, start, let's first have a look at what's the meaning of the graph neural network. So in general, graph neural network uh, or GNNs are a type of uh, deep neural networks, which uh, takes the graph structure data as input. So first, the uh, architecture of a uh, typical GNN is very similar as the traditional uh, convolutional neural network CNN, uh, which has multiple uh, neural layers. And each of the neural layer will contain a number of the uh, neural nodes. So this is very similar as the MLP. And then the difference is that the input of the uh, GNN now is the graph structure data which means it has some like geometric information of the, of, uh, of the data, which shows the relation uh, inside of the data. And this is usually takes the form of the adjacency matrix, which representing the connecting uh, edges, and also uh, the features on the nodes of the graph. So let's have a look of the data light. So in the right-hand side, this uh, like picture, uh, in 2D, which shows, uh, which is usually used uh, in like image classification for CNN. So this is a picture uh, as uh, of the famous uh, Sydney Opera House, and we can see that the <coughs> the the values of the uh, or the data is actually on the are uh, the pixel values which are, are located at a regular grid in uh, in the play. Well, on the left hand side, we show an example of the graph data. Uh, this is actually in a, uh, uh, mo a molecular, uh, molecular structure which contains atoms and, the, uh, and their connections. So now the atoms are regarded as the nodes and the, and the connections are the bonds between the atoms are, are the edges. So we can see that the uh, 
the location of the nodes are not regular. And also, uh, the connections uh, will be different for different uh, graph data samples. So here, uh, the, the key difference is that also the size, that means the number of the nodes will be different for different graphs. And uh, what kind of like problems can graph neural network solve? So first, uh, it can be helped to, uh, it can be used to like uh, uh, solve the node property prediction tasks like the node classification uh, or recently using Jack uh, repurposing uh, using some uh, Jack repositioning knowledge graph or recommender systems, which is used like in e-commerce. And uh, the key thing is that the whole, uh, the input is only one graph. And uh, the GNN is used to like, uh, to you uh, to to be traded uh, on the some no labeled uh, nodes. And the other nodes are, uh, has some missing labels to be predicted. So for example, in the left-hand picture is the example of such kind of node classification used for uh, like the Twitter data set where the uh, nodes are the users and the connections are the relationship between the users. And from some uh, labels on the users, we can infer other uh, like interesting properties from the users if, uh, if we want like. Uh, also, uh, the graph neural network can be used in uh, graph property predictions. Such kind of examples include uh, graph classification or graph regression tasks, uh, graph generation, uh, 3D object recognition, like the uh, like uh, now is self-driving for the lidar data set. And uh, so the the difference with the uh, node property uh, prediction is that now the input is a set of graph. So it's a, so each graph has a kind of sample, uh, assembled label, Y label. Then the graph samples with no Y labels and the features on the graph are then used to um, be traded by the uh, GN. And the trade GN model will help to like infer the missing Y labels for each single graph. So for example, this is, this picture shows, uh, uh, shows uh, uh, graph classification for uh, enzymes. So each enzyme is uh, regarded, is uh, like modeled as a graph structure data. And then the graph structure data will correspond to the Y label, which is a type of the enzyme or protein. So GN can be help uh, can help to like uh, identify uh, from the structure of the enemy to the type of the uh, exact meaning. Uh, so this is uh, like uh, what I mentioned the graph classification for enemies. So GN and are the labeling uh, for labeling like enemies a set of like graph is will be like extracted as uh, input data set. So each graph represents a very specific uh, protein uh, tertiary structure. And the task now is to assign each enzyme instance to one of the given EC top level classes uh, correctly. So the, so the GN uh, role is to like find universally the uh, applicable uh, rules to like label the graphs by learning the uh, geometry or topological uh, and the feature information of the original input. Another interesting example in science is uh, the uh, for like a GN can be used in quantum chemistry and uh, graph regression, where uh, the data set is a collection of about uh, 7,000 uh, molecules. And each molecule contains up to like, we you know, 23 atoms. And the atoms are connected by the bonds and molecular structure uh, for different like uh, uh, molecule will vary. So 
now the now we can like uh, model the molecule as a graph where the atoms are the nodes and the bonds are the edges. So the Coulomb energy are the uh, weights in the, uh, on the edges. And then the Coulomb energy matrix is the corresponding adjacency matrix. So now the task uh, uh, can be like to predict the atomization energy uh, of a molecule within uh, using their molecular structure. Another interesting one is like in health. Like, uh, for example, uh, here we uh, we like take the uh, staining image of the cells from the uh, gastric uh, uh, slides for each uh, cancer patient, and uh, so this is the collection. Uh, this is a staining image uh, of the cells. And using some uh, like uh, algorithm, we can extract the individual cells into like in this B picture. Uh, <clears throat> so here maybe contain uh, containing thousands or uh, yeah ten thousands of uh, cells. So f this is a difficult problem. Like to so the task is to predict uh, how long each like tumor uh, or cancer patient can uh, survive. So then we uh, like construct a kind of like call the cell graphs by uh, like connecting the uh, neighboring uh, cells in using their critical distance. Well, the distance means if the, if the two cells are too close, then uh, the cancer cell will have some impact uh, to the uh, impact on the healthy cells, uh, and if the if they are uh, distant apart, then the effect is little. So using that, we can like uh, construct a kind of graph, and using uh, this graph data and the GN, then we can uh, help to like predict the survival time of each patient, and this becomes a like graph classification task for GN. So what makes a graph neural network function uh, help, uh, useful or work? So the key thing is that we can regard it as a, a called a spectral graph uh, convolution. Well, this is a very uh, similar definition as used in traditional Fourier convolution, where we use a, a kind of basis on the graph, uh, on the L2 space on the graph. And uh, then the convolution is defined uh, as a discrete form of the uh, Fourier transform. So the U transform G uh, then product with the uh, U transform uh, transpose F, where the uh, G is some like a chaining uh, weight in, in the G and, and F is the input data or input signal. And then after that, uh, after this uh, Hadamard product, we will do some inverse transform by the same basis U. Uh, so it has a like a similar like uh, role as in uh, as the convolution in CNN, uh, and it can have, like help to preserve the structural information of the graph data inputs, as I will mention later, and also more general information of this uh, spectral. Uh, a graph convolution is regarded as a uh, neural message pattern. Here, I will just focus on this uh, spectral method. So, to define a proper uh, or to define a good graph convolution, so is the key to the success of uh, uh, GN modeling. So, uh, here we will help to use uh, frame it convolution. That means we will use a, a frame transform for the original graph data uh, in this convolution definition. So uh, the exact definition is like this. The x, uh, x prime is some like transform the uh, uh, original data where x is the uh, mm, node feature on the nodes. Uh, and uh, it's a kind of matrix of some uh, size, maybe m by d, 
and then uh, m by dn is the number of the nodes of the graph, and d is the number of the um, features on each node on each node. So feature is just a vector. It's a kind of vector on the node. Uh, and uh, uh, then the W is some like chainable weight uh, for network, uh, where this transfer means that we will like compress or we will extract uh, some uh, information or combine some uh, features together to be another uh, new feature, so X prime. This will simplify our calculation or uh, uh, help to in enhance the network performance. Then the dump, uh, then the, the the x prime will be like transformed by our w, which is uh, which is uh, frame transform. Uh -huh. So then the w, uh, so w uh, is actually an operator, uh, not just a uh, matrix, and I will explain in detail later. It's a kind of sequence of n times j plus one transform matrices, uh, and, and we can combine together can take some low pass and high pass information of the original data. Uh, then the theta is a uh, vector uh, is very key to this convolution. Theta is a chainable weight. Uh, here can be a vector, and then uh, the length of the vector is equal to n j plus one times the number of the nodes in order to match the dimension of the input. Uh, and then the uh, diagonal means we make it a diagonal matrix. So uh, these two matrix can, can be like product together. Uh, and, and this is still in the like uh, frequency domain or the frame domain or wavelet domain. So the V, uh, then we will turn back, uh, we will pull back uh, the uh, information to the spatial domain by using the inverse transform V uh, of the framing system. And after that, we will uh, apply some nonlinear transform like ReLU or other like uh, sigmoid functions for uh, graph neural network. So this defines a kind of uh, convolution or graph convolution, which we call the, because we use the framing system, so we call it the frame uh, convolution. So it's key to mention that uh, uh, the network filter theta lies in the frequency domain, so each component of which is like multiplied to the corresponding row of the signal uh, of the uh, yeah coefficient. So so W X prime is called a coefficient uh, frame the coefficient matrix. Uh, and what's the uh, like uh, graph frame is? So <clears throat> graph frame is a kind of like a, a tight wavelet uh, wave, wavelet tight frame on. Uh, defined on the L2 space on the graph. Uh, so <clears throat> here we just use on that mid frame, uh, that means uh, it has scales, but uh, at uh, each level of the scale, the number of the nodes will not change. Uh, and this defined based on the like uh, uh, spectral method. So, so we need the uh, eigenvalue and eigenvector, uh, or what we call the eigenpair of the uh, graph Laplacian. So if denote it as lambda L and UL. So the number of them is uh, equal to the number of the nodes. So then the uh, framelets are defined as the phi JP and the psi JPN, where the J is uh, uh, in indicates the uh, scaling level. Uh, and the P is the translation point. Well, the N, uh, so, so phi is a uh, low pass and the psi is the high pass. High pass can, uh, there can, uh, we can have like multiple high passes. So the number of the N can be up to like R. R can be arbitrary integer. Uh, but usually we take like one or two, it should be sufficient. And the uh, low pass and high pass the difference is that it, they are both the expansion of the uh, uh, Fourier kernel U U L um, translated a P and evaluated uh, some node U uh, V. Uh, the difference of the low pass and high pass they are scaled by different uh, the coefficient are modified or filtered by uh, is alpha and beta respectively. Where alpha is some uh, low pass filter and, and why 
uh, data are the high pass filter, uh, which is very similar to the uh, traditional wave system. Also, uh, need to mention the uh, frame rate coefficient is yes, uh, um, is denoted as uh, in, uh, product uh, pro projection of the f onto these two bases, uh, low pass and high pass, uh, and also the the also as similar as the wavelet system, there's a scaling or dilation factor uh, two to j where the base is two. And the J is a scaling factor. Mm. Then here the picture shows some like, examples of the um, of the scaling function or the field bank. So field bank is uh, like companion of the um, of the scaling function. So it's uh, like uh, um, so it's very uh, closely related, but I didn't uh, write down explicitly. And we can see that the shape, uh, this picture, the first row shows the shape of the uh, of the low pass filter and high pass filter. So the low pass filter is the blue blue ones, uh, and and uh, uh, the high pass filters uh, here we use two high pass is uh, red and the yellow. Uh, so the blue is uh, low pass, which has uh, uh, is a constant uh, from zero over some. Uh, period and the key thing is that the high pass is zero uh, from zero to some uh, to some value and this makes a key difference to the low pass and high pass which carries different information so so actually the the following picture shows the exact example for the like a uh, uh, mini SUDA traffic network. So this is uh, the nodes of the um, the nodes of the network or nodes of the graph is uh, is a city, and the, the connections between the uh, nodes are the roads um, between the cities. And we can apply some uh, wavelet uh, so uh, frame it uh, transform over this uh, mini SUDA traffic network. And the resulting uh, shows the low pass and high pass coefficients. For example, B is the low pass coefficient, where uh, we can see that uh, the data, are, the, the coefficients are scattered around uh, over the whole network, and the values are significant. So that means the uh, uh, <coughs> the low pass uh, coefficient uh, will uh, carry some um, approximating information of the original data. Well, the high pass we see the value are uh, very close to the zero, so that means the high pass will like carry on some uh, detailed information of the original data. So more advanced, we can like define uh, we can replace our previous ReLU activation uh, by the shrinkage, because we know that uh, in wavelet system the shrinkage can help to like reduce the redundancy of the system and can like uh, uh, do some uh, uh, can help to improve or reduce the noise in the uh, in the data. Uh, but the key thing is that the shrinkage is defined on over the frequency domain or frame uh, frame domain. So so the definition of the uh, frame it, uh, what we call frame it activation or frame it, uh, based uh, um, uh, frame it convolution is defined as that. Uh, so the, the shrinkage over this product uh, of diagonal of theta with uh, uh, frame the coefficient w x prime, and then transform back uh, by using the uh, inverse transform v. So this is defined as uh, like uh, what we call the shrinkage uh, frame the coefficient uh, uh, frame the convolution. So this picture shows the example of that. Uh, it actually shows that in the left hand side picture, the this is the data like the graph data with ten uh, ten nodes, no? and uh, this is the graph structured uh, information. And then below is uh, is the feature on each data. So it's uh, uh, num the row is, is the number of the rows is equal to the number of the uh, nodes. So it's ten. And there are three features, so it's three. So 10 by three matrix is a feature matrix. So these two ma uh, information 
is actually what we need uh, as the input for the graph neural network. Then the convolution works like this. So the first, the input is input feature will be uh, uh, function uh, will be a uh, function by these three uh, wavelet transform matrix. So this uh, frame transform matrix. Uh, so here we use level up to two and only one high pass. So we have uh, one high, one low pass and then two high pass. Uh, each are uh, the matrix of the size of ten by ten. Uh, and uh, then we can like uh, uh, do this W X prime. So so this is the dub, uh, this is X prime and and uh, then this is the three W. Uh, then the final uh, this output is the W X prime. So this is actually the fra uh, frame the coefficient. And the diagonal is a vector with the same size uh, as. Uh, uh, as this concatenate uh, output, so so it is a, it's 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 ten ten ten, so it's thirty times three, and the vector is the length of thirty. So finally, the output will have the thirty times ten. So this uh, this vector is the diagonal times the w x prime, and then shrinkage function is applied here after this product, in, but still in the frequency domain. Uh, so after that, we can see a uh, similar size, a uh, same size um, vector <coughs> as before, but the values are like cut a bit, in especially in the high frequency. And then it turns back by this transform, an inverse transform back to this output. So this is uh, the output of the um, sh shrinkage frame convolution. Now. Uh, what's the shrinkage for? Like shrinkage can like used in uh, to used for the uh, signal compression. For example, uh, especially because in the traditional wavelets, like shrinkage is uh, applied or implemented by soft stress holding, like mentioned in Donahue, uh, uh, invented by Donahue, uh, and so on. Uh, so like used in wavelet shrinkage or in lasso. So the key thing is that the shrinkage will uh, cut some coefficient or set some co uh, high pass coefficient to zero by using this function, soft, uh, soft stress holding. Uh, <clears throat> so x with uh, absolute value less than lambda should return to zero. And apply the above like uh, soft stress holding to the uh, shrinkage activation in frame coefficient will only uh, inference small high pass frame coefficients. So, so we know that the low pass will uh, be some uh, will contain some approximation information. And so, uh, if we cut only the high pass information, uh, the there will be little loss of the uh, total energy of the signal. Uh, and how to like determine the lambda that Donahue gives some very precise, accurate uh, uh, estimate of lambda, which is determined by the sigma uh, and the number of the nodes, the number of the coefficient n uh, using this formula. Uh, we follow this formula, and uh, but the sigma here originally is the noise level uh, of the original sigma, but we don't have the a noise level, so. We will like associate the uh, theta to be the magnitude order of the uh, frame the coefficient, so it will reflect the scale of the frame representation. So, uh, in short, the frame representation provides a multi-scale representation of the original data, and using the uh, shrinkage uh, information, we can like reduce some noise. Otherwise, see, uh, as we will see later, uh, uh, and the, the uh, frame coefficient here shows some like uh, example on the citation network called Cora, which contains about twenty seven hundred nodes, and the picture uh, like shows some uh, coefficient uh, on the so so this is original data. And uh, the picture shows some uh, like coefficient at the initialization or after 
two convolution layers before shrinkage activation or after shrinkage activation. That is uh, the coefficient of this one and uh, and this one and this one. So we show these three vectors. Uh, and the vertical comparison is uh, like the low pass and the high pass. Indicate that the high pass coefficient can compress the critical part of the coefficient of the shrinkage. Here, the compression rate is up to like 50%. And uh, <clears throat> The horizon, uh, the horizontal um, rep, uh, comparison shows that the is it, is uh, a different uh, like stage uh, in the network. Shows the high pass coefficient usually have like a more distinctive like values and concentrated on like detailed information uh, as compared to the low pass. So this is very important in the uh, like network performance. So uh, here we can only like first show some examples uh, on like. As I mentioned, the node classification benchmark because uh, frame uh, convolution can first be applied to this task, and the task contains like some citation network data sets uh, uh, benchmark, and also the recent like uh, open graph benchmark, which is the large size um, graph data, uh, contains up to like uh, about one hundred about one hundred seventy thousand nodes. Uh, one million and uh, one million uh, edges. So the result shows that the uh, if we use the ReLU as the activation, uh, so we don't use the shrinkage for compression. Then the uh, frame this is uh, UFG is a frame convolution has uh, like performance uh, achieve the top and uh, <coughs> if we use like shrinkage. Uh, here we can like compress up to like we can only use fifty percent of the information or less. Then the uh, corresponding convolution can uh, with for the GNN can achieve like also among the top performance. That means that uh, our like uh, algorithm is very successful for both the ReLU and the shrinkage case. Uh, also, as I mentioned, that uh, using the shrinkage activation, we can uh, like increase the uh, robustness of the uh, system. So that means we can uh, help to reduce or can be uh, can help to reduce the noise uh, in the data or in the network. And these two pictures shows uh, the left and right hand side uh, respectively show the node and the structure. Perturbation analysis for uh, for the citation network Quora data sets, respectively, and we uh, randomly like change the node feature edge weight from zero to one to its opposite, uh, and the and the left hand side in the in both uh, case the x axis means uh, uh, noise level or the or the uh, signal to noise ratio. So as the SNR increase, the convolution behave uh, well ahead of the uh, baselines GCN and the GAT. GAT is a graph attention uh, network, and GCN is a graph convolutional network. Uh, well, uh, it can have a higher like test accuracy, but a smaller variance. So that means it's uh, it has high performance uh, with like stable uh, training. Well, the uh, slight lower performance of the you uh, of the convolution only occurs when the noise is too uh, too large. That means the misinformation uh, denominates uh, dominates our like uh, graph structure. So uh, these two examples illustrate the exactness of the uh, shrinkage uh, frame it convolution in like node and the structure denoising task. <coughs> uh, and mm, if the and so previously we only consider the case for the graph convolution which can be used in node class between tasks, but in graph level uh, task. Uh, like for example, the the graph has different number of sides and uh, different uh, like connectivity structures. 
there will be a problem because the output of the uh, convolution have the same size as the input. So it will not change the size of the uh, uh, of the of the first dimension. Uh, so one way to use one way to solve this problem is to like use graph pooling. So it's a kind of the uh, computational strategy, like to reduce the number of the graph nodes while preserve as much as geometric information of the uh, original input graph data. So by using pooling, one has a, like unified graph level representation for graph structure data, when the size and topology of the original graph uh, are still changing. So we here you still use the like framing system to define the pooling. Uh, so, so here we, we use, a, for example, two level uh, framing system. We have one high pass and two, uh, one, one low pass and two high passes. So given the graph with like feature, uh, featuring a matrix X, which is the input, and we can obtain a set of the framing coefficients to mention uh, these three. Yeah, this, these three, this is the framing coefficient. And then we compress them together uh, by like using a very simple uh, sum or the sum of the square of the coefficients. And then because it has three features, so it, it becomes a vector of dimension three. Uh, then uh, here the difference is that we use two strategies, the sum or the sum of squares. So the two aggregation method will corresponding to two frame pooling strategies. As shown in the picture, uh, here the calculation compresses the uh, uh, compressed coefficient to a unified form, uh, unified unified size, and the pulled output from the three frame coefficients will result in a three D vector uh, like this. So this can help for like to solve the problem, and also because the frame pulling uh, will benefit. The network chaining by like information uh, by employing the information from the multi scales because all the uh, scales in the frame representation are used, and uh, also like um, especially for the um, for the aggregation by using the spectral method. Uh, what we call, which is the sum of the squares of the all the coefficients, uh, this can like help to uh, con con conserve the total information in the polling uh, operation. So that means the output after polling, the L two norm is equal to the input L two norm. That means like the polling can like uh, preserve the total information of the uh, graph signal uh, have little loss in training. So, so uh, here we show the example of the uh, frame the polling for graph classification. So we select six benchmarks uh, to test uh, like uh, five are from the uh, TU uh, benchmark, including uh, some like uh, protease uh, uh, from biology, and some uh, and one is from the uh, OGB mo uh, molecule uh, data set, which is using quantum chemistry regression uh, classification, and also another one is from the like uh, quantum chemistry regression task, same as I mentioned before, especially the o OGB G uh, more high has like uh, it's a large data set contains about one day, uh, 41 thousand graphs and the graph size is up to like uh, from like uh, 23 up to thousands so it contains uh, large scales uh, of the data uh, large scales for the data size and we compare with uh, like our UF, uh, our uh, frame pool, which we call the UFGU, means uh, undecimated frame graph pooling. Uh, we have two um, versions one is the sum, one is the sum, uh, one is the spectral. Spectral means the uh, uh, sum of the squares of the coefficients. <coughs> and compared with the baselines, which include the top K pooling, 
attention polling and SAG polling and also the classic um, sum, mean, and max polling. Then uh, the pic, uh, the table shows uh, uh, shows our like uh, UFG pool method uh, outperform out performance like other method on all data sets. It's very clear and uh, uh, specifically the uh, our UFG pool sum achieves the top accuracy in four out of the six data sets. And the second best in other two. Uh, so, so we also observe that the uh, spectral case perform better on small uh, molecular predictions like uh, MUTA, uh, QM7, and also the OGB MoHive. These three. So these three. Uh, so this uh, precedence uh, might come from the encoding and the multi-scale signal energy. To network when the uh, frame is uh, spectral will capture the practically the significant feature of the molecular data. Also, like we have a uh, uh, sensitivity analysis for this uh, frame, where we analyze the sensitivity of the UFG convolution uh, for like uh, uh, with ReLU or with shrinkage. Uh, on the frame the dilation and the scale, that means when we change the dilation or when we change the scales, the performance uh, of the convolution will uh, almost the same. Will be almost the same. So for citation networks, that means uh, our like convolution is very stable uh, for these two factors. And also, if we like change the um, compression rate in the shrinkage, right? Uh, for uh, ideally, like a high test accuracy will uh, pre uh, preferable to pair with uh, like a low compression ratio, and uh, the change in accuracy uh, should be minimum, uh, as our model is like incentive to the hyperparameters. However, uh, like in the picture, we can see that uh, increasing uh, compression ratio generally result in uh, slightly higher prediction accuracy uh, because more coefficient for the Fermi representation is used by the convolution. So this is consistent with our like intuition. So so but then uh, but roughly speaking the compression rate uh, also like is a kind of uh, stable for chaining. That means uh, we can uh, we can like change the level uh, we have a lot like a large gap for changing the um, level for the uh, soft strength holding in like, like sigma or uh, or the or the lambda <coughs> and 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 here we also study the uh, relation between the like the frame coefficient uh, frame spectrum uh, chaining loss and the ne network uh, capacity so the key thing I want to mention is that the learning behavior of the final frame convolution layer of like graph neural network with two uh, like, uh, frame convolution for Cora data sets is shown in this uh, in this set of pictures. So the first picture is the loss and then is the uh, norm of the theta. So the coefficients after the shrinkage activation are proportional to the like frame uh, from the power spectral at the coefficient level. So we thus uh, let the like, threshold level proportion, proportional to the uh, framed energy for high pass. So this like frame spectral curve in training shown a higher magnitude order of low pass than those in the high pass. So that means in, in low pass, we have a uh, high dependence on the Loss. So, so low pass will be the main uh, determinant, and the high pass will only change the scale of the loss or the detailed characteristic for the uh, chaining loss. And also, like compared to the ReLU case, uh, so the first row is for the ReLU, and the second row is for the network using uh, shrinkage elevation. 
So shrinkage activation fills out some like high pass coefficient in graph convolution, which will result uh, in much smaller frame spectrum for like high passes. But in contrast, in the low pass shrinkage uh, involves like no cutoff, so the energy is less dis distinguishable from the like value case. And also the training loss of each like output uh, feature indicate that the shrinkage allows for a more stable training uh, uh, with a uh, monotonically like, decreasing loss. Well, uh, if we split in low pass and high passes for loss, uh, we'll suggest uh, a more flexible and precise control of the training. It also opens the possibility of like, uh, like we can like maybe in future design the new weighted loss uh, taking account of the like, frame rate and scales. So uh, here, uh, I want to remark that we explore the adaption of the uh, graph frame rate for graph neural network, that we, we apply some uh, frame system to the uh, graph convolution and the graph polling. And this somehow like links the graph neural network and the, uh, the signal um, processing. And in many like node level graph level tasks, like uh, uh, frame the convolutions can like reduce both feature and structure noises. We also like introduce uh, shrinkage activation that strengthens like high pass coefficient in frame uh, convolution. So this shrinkage activation <coughs> can strengthen the network denoising as we see uh, capacity and uh, also uh, significantly. Uh, compress the graph signal. Finally, we also define the frame the polling, uh, which outperforms baselines on the variety of the uh, graph property and prediction tasks. So, thank you for your attention. Okay, so let's uh, so let me answer some questions. So, what about the um, complexity? Uh, no, the first one uh, go back is uh, the first one is uh, by Nicola. The tasks Nicola. aren't mm. the eigenvectors of the graph Laplacian real vectors. Uh, if you go go on, okay, okay. Are the frames modular? Yes, aren't the eigenvectors mm. of the graph Laplacian? Real, real vectors. Exactly, mm -hmm. the first one. Uh, uh, okay. Real vectors. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes, they are real vectors. Okay, so um. all... And Nicole asks again, so the topology of the graph enters the model only through the spectrum of the graph Laplacian? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So the like geometry and the topology of, uh, uh, of the graph data will be like, mainly represented by the uh, basis and because the basis is uh, is defined in terms of the spectrum of the graph Laplacian so uh, so the topology is actually from this uh, graph Laplacian okay uh, Daniela asks uh, what is the distance between two graphs what is the metric uh metric okay yes. the distance between two graphs 
Uh, we didn't define the metric between the graphs, actually. Uh, because uh, uh, she asked, uh, the, fram, the frame letter is a frame for the space of L2 space of graph? Uh, no, uh, frame, framelet is, uh, uh, is uh, like a function, is the basis for the L2 space of the graph, right? And, uh, and, and the distance between two graphs in this space? Uh, okay. Yeah, you can define it. If you have a, like a frame representation, then you can define the distance between the uh, graph using the like, a distance between the uh, frame the coefficients. So it is defined in terms of uh, framelet coefficients, uh, the distance between the two graphs. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, Jean-Francois asks, uh, what about complexity with respect to the number of nodes and arcs? Uh, yeah, good question. So uh, I didn't mention that actually the number, uh, so this is uh, mentioned in our paper. Uh, I think the number, uh, the, 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 like for the framework convolution, the, uh, complexity uh, is proportional to the number of the nodes. Uh. Okay, yeah. then uh, there is uh, al uh, always um, Jean-Francois. Uh, uh, this <laughs> this is uh, a discussion between <laughs> Nicola. Uh, yes, are framelets modular? Uh, so what do you mean by this modular? Uh. Uh. I think frame it is uh, uh, what we call is a tight frame. Here, here the, the frame system is a tight frame. I'm not sure if it's a modular. Good question. Uh, OK, I have uh, just a question uh, too. Uh, uh, is uh, the following. Do you use some fast framelet transform? for the calculation? Uh, uh, yes, exactly, yeah. Ah, okay, so the construction of uh, the tight frame let's, is decimated, is a decimated one? Uh, it's not decimated, the... undecimated. Uh, it's undecimated, okay. Undecimated, but, but have... we uh, use a special technique like, uh, <clears throat> it's undecimated, but we have to like use some uh, Chebyshev approximation. Uh, Okay. In order to and achieve a fast uh, uh, implementation. If I, so you have a fast implementation of the of mm -hmm. uh, the frame yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. good question. Yeah, I haven't like mentioned this. Uh, no, <laughs> yes, this is important <laughs> because uh, the computational cost uh, is uh, is important in uh, in uh, Europe in this kind of application when you works. Uh, on uh, neural networks. Okay, then uh, we have uh, a moment. Uh, uh, when Jean Francois asked, uh, uh, are framelets modular operations on graphs? Uh, so Daniel asks again, uh, how you judge the distance between the graph and the shrinkage uh, uh, one? Uh, shrinkage. Yes, the distance okay. between uh, the between uh, the graph and the graph that is shrinkaged after shrinkage. Uh huh. Uh, so shrinkage means we just uh, set some or we just uh, cut some high uh, yes high pass uh, coefficient. So the distance I think will be smaller uh, because we reduce some. Um, uh, we reduce some length uh, of the coefficient. And uh, Giovanni says a nice work. Uh, he, he, he says that he couldn't follow the talk from the beginning, but uh, asks if you can say something about a hyperparameters estimation. Uh, hyperparameter, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, can you see the screen again? Uh, and also number of classes of choice, uh, hyperparameter estimation and number of classes uh, choice too. Mm -hmm. 
so here's uh, like so we have uh, defined this convolution and the, the <coughs> hyperparameters are uh, there are many factors uh, will determine that for example there's a level of the how how many levels we are going to choose uh, and uh, and for shrinkage for example this n j are the hyperparameters usually i just choose n to be uh, 2 and j to be 2 uh, so we have level j for scales and uh, also for just uh, for using one high pass uh, another hyperparameter comes from like uh, uh, shrinkage when we have to choose the number of the theta so the value of the theta is determined by magnitude of the coefficient uh, that reflects the like a friendly that representation. So so sigma like will be uh, proportional to the uh, to the size of the uh, frame the coefficients uh, uh, norm. So these are two hyperparameters uh, very significant for defining the frame the convolution, and for the like frame the pooling. <laughs> We also have this uh, apply this frame transform. So the hyperparameter are from the uh, are also the, the n and the capital J. Uh, besides, we also have the like uh, <coughs> uh, hyperparameters for the networks. So uh, so so this will be like determined by the specific tasks. We have to like queue it uh, uh, case by case. Uh, hope this answer your my question. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, there is a, the last questions always by Jean Francois. Uh, here, framelet of f g one g two is equal to f prime of framelet on g one and framelet g two. Mm. Okay. Parameter of G. Um, so we only define the parameter uh, for the uh, signal on one graph. Uh, I, I'm not sure how to define the like. Uh, what's the meaning of F G one G two? Then maybe yeah. that means that. Uh, the connect of two graphs, or I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, Jean Francois is uh, perhaps uh, you can uh, better explain uh, what do you mean by F? Mm -hmm. <coughs> because it is just the framelet on the graph. Yeah, on the, your input data that is uh, the adjacency matrix of the graph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So firm is only defined for uh, uh, for a single graph. Yeah, I don't know if uh, Jean Francois is uh, F A ah, F is uh, any operation an operation to graphs. Okay. Uh, suppose we have an operation for two graphs and it becomes yes. another graph. Uh, then I don't know. I don't know if they are equivalent or not. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, mm. it's hard okay. to say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Perfect. I suppose uh, I don't see any other question. We thanks uh, again, uh, you Wong, for this interesting uh, perspective, perspective, this interesting seminar. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, the next appointment for the IM seminars will be in two weeks, the 18th of May with uh, Michele Piana. Uh, and uh, but uh, there is uh, another appointment uh, that is uh, the 13th of May with uh, Marco Lauricella for the series of uh, seminars of uh, the Institute for Applied Maths. Okay, goodbye to everyone.
and uh, let's see yeah. again. Thank you, Thank you for your patience. Thank you. You won. Thank you again. <laughs>